If we just talk about your emotions of playing your last game in Austin Stadium and, and kind of how it went for you. I mean, I thought it went great. I mean, the fans were great today. And just being able to walk out the tunnel your last time with your family, I mean, never really hits you until you actually have to get out there. It's, it's something that's different, I'd have to say. You get out there and you don't think you're going to be emotional. And then you get out there and it's just the fact you see the fans for the last time. So, I mean, it was great. I think great opportunity. Right here, Matt. I feel like you guys, you and Troy did specifically matching up with uh, Nelson Spruce. He obviously led, leads the country in receptions per game. I think he only had two for like 16 yards. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I mean, I have to say, I mean, we have felt like we did a good job. I mean, he's a good player, but we felt that we were going to be able to challenge him. It would be tough for him to get open because we feel like we're quick and we – I feel like we could match up with pretty much anybody we go against. And I think we did a good job of forcing him to try to beat us deep. And he wasn't really able to get his short routes. And that's where he gets most of his catches and yardage. And I think it kind of threw them off guard. All right, Brian. You know, as the end of your Oregon, you know, comes to as the end of your career comes to an end, you know, what are you really telling these younger guys about, you know, what it's like to play for Oregon? And then what goes through you when you see people like Chris, Chris say, say, make a great play like he did? I mean, really, just you got to tell the younger guys you have to take every opportunity you get, and you can't think, "Oh, I'm just going to do it next year or next week." Because, I mean, it goes by fast. I I remember playing my first game here, and now I'm playing my last. So, I mean, it goes by faster and faster every year, and you think you have time, but you have to remember that you have to push yourself every day. And that time that you think you have, you really don't have because it goes fast. If I know you've been part of this Civil War thing for a long time, you're not from Oregon, but is it a different feel as you begin preparation for them this week and going into Corvallis? Ethel, before you answer, please. Doug Brenner, over here in the uh, cubicle area. Go ahead. Right. I'd have to say, I mean, definitely playing the Civil War, I mean, it's always a different feeling. You know, a lot of guys know each other on, this, on the team, and the fans, they, I mean, they're pretty... I mean, it's pretty hectic. You go to the, you go to Corvallis, so they come here, and the fans are gonna let the other team have it. And I mean, it's a rivalry game. That's how it's supposed to be. We get the best out of them, and they're gonna get the best from us. Ifo, what do you want your legacy to be at Oregon? What do you want them to be saying about you in like two or three years? Um, I mean, I just wanted to let them know that I mean, I did gave them my all. I mean, helped the players around me become better and become great players. And I mean, it wasn't just out there to, to just for myself. I was came here to. Have play on a great team to make the players around me better and just really leave an imp uh, a print. I mean, I feel like the D boys since we since I've been here have just got better and better every year, and now we're keeping a. I feel like we have a sit the same type of standard now that we're gonna have in the next. I mean, twenty years we're gonna just keep pushing that forward, and that's really what I want to leave. In the back, Tom. Back here, Efo. Uh, to that point, can you speak a? From what you've seen from Marcus over his three years here, I mean, if this is indeed his last home game, his last season, what you've seen uh, going against him in practice and the things he's done for the program? I mean, yeah, Marcus, he's a great player. And, I mean, everyone sees him do great things on game day every week, but it all goes back to what he does on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I mean, he's that guy, first guy in the weight room, last guy out. He's the same guy that's the first person here for meetings, the last guy to leave. I mean, it all carries over. From the summer, he's the guy that's out there pushing everybody. And I mean, everything that you do, it carries over. It's the little things. You're never going to have to worry about Marcus being um, doing something bad in the community, worry about him coming late to stuff. Just those little things that really make great players great. Right here in the front left, Matt. Evo, you brought up the D-Boys. How do you define what a D-Boy is for the defensive backs? And what have you done to the younger guys to kind of pass that message along? From what I mean, you've learned. I mean... To define the D-Boys, I would have to say really just relentless, honestly. Just, I mean, we we try to compete with each other every single day. And whether we have um, guys that have been great players for three years or guys that are brand new, we're competing against them every day and forcing them to bring out the best because we know that nothing's given to you. And playing defensive back, especially, you have to rely on the guys around you. And I feel that we've just formed a family since I've been here. I feel all of us are close and whether something's going wrong for one guy, we always have each other's back. And I mean, that's what I would define the D-Boys as. Ifo, I think uh, it was you that made Mark Helfrich or Coach Helfrich cry when you hugged him at the uh, beginning, before the game started. Can you maybe share what you, what you said to him and maybe what he said to you? I mean, he just said, I mean, just said great career, great job. I mean, really just look at your coach and you know, you don't really have to say anything. You just know, I mean, you've been around the guy for 
four years now and you just know he's a special person. He feels that I've been a great person for this um, team and just really just that last time that gets a step on the field and you see your coach, how much everybody's grown and I'm sure he's probably seen the same thing for me. I've been, I'm not the same player I was when I was a freshman and he just saw how much I've grew since then and I think that's really what got to him.